right. You chose correctly. Good for you. Good for you for figuring Yay. out that the piece of news that was real was that the only arrest so far in the Panama Papers scandal has been the employee who leaked the information. Yep, you live in that world, man. You live in that fucked up world where nobody, no one is held accountable for anything anymore. Nobody cares. You know, you could do the most fraud in the world and everybody would be like, wow, that's amazing. You're smart. You're really fucking smart. You pulled that off. Good for you. I think that's how we think. You know, like all the people that basically rip, rip us off, all the companies that basically find tax havens or ways to defraud, uh, you know, taxpayers. We're all like, wow, they're clever, eh? Maybe we should give them a raise for ripping us off so good. That's amazing. You did an amazing job. Like, that's actually what happened in the 2008 financial crisis. They brought the entire financial world to their knees. Bankers, these irresponsible fucking people who were just handing out loans like it was candy at Halloween. Like, to just anybody. Like, to, to a person's dog. That's what they did. They wrote loans for animals. That's how bad it was. Right? They faked signatures. This is th all of this happened in the 2008 financial crisis, and yet after the dust settled, the American government made them made the bank sign this. Oh, we did some wrong, so we're gonna pay the money. All and and that money that they paid off, like the couple of billion dollars, was literally the profit they had made from interest-free loans on trillions of dollars. So they basically paid off their debt with the money of the interest that they got from these bullshit loans. Sounds like they got off pretty easy, don't you think? Well, I don't know. When you get a $30 million bonus for crashing the economy, I, I, I got to stand up and clap and say, wow, congratulations, everybody. I mean, this is... You, you can't do anything more outrageous. I'm surprised. I think we've actually, as a human species, we found a ray, way to not be outraged. I think that if I would have told this story back in medieval fucking any country, name a country... Every peasant would have grabbed their weapons and fucking taken out the rich. That's what they would have done. They would have taken them out and not for dinner. Mm -mm. This is not a date. <laughs> yeah. So you, forget the flowers. You know, you don't, want, you don't want flowers at that date. You have a shovel at that fucking date. I mean, we're, we're just not outraged as a society anymore. Is that, is that our problem? I swear to you, I thought this Panama paper thing, I'm like, this is it, man. This is going to be the point where the world's like, we have had enough. Well, I think m most people believe that uh, people have gone to jail because of that. And uh, it's, it's all basically resolved, right? Because, uh, you know, we don't hear about it anymore. They must have taken care of it. Justice must have been served. Am I right? What's weird is actually, no, you're completely wrong. I mean, maybe what happens is that because we become so outraged, we are convinced that something's going to have to get done. But what we don't realize, and, and this, this, this Mossack Fonseca thing is a perfect example of when you create laws that are effectively legalizing corruption, then what are you supposed to charge people with? Well, you don't have the adequate laws that exist to do so, so you'd have to make new laws. But the problem is that the people who make the new laws are the ones involved in the corruption in the first place. So um, Fair is fair. Revolving door. There's basically the only way that you would be able to institute any laws is to have them write a law that would allow a kind of like, well, um, a, a, a 10 or 20 year moratorium on anybody involved in the scam. Because by then they probably figure, well, I'll be dead by then. But then the economy would take a nosedive and nobody wants that. Well, here's the, here's the kind of question. There may be a more cynical reason why nothing's been done about this whole tax haven business. And the truth is because probably our economy is propped up on lies built upon lies. I mean, the one thing you'll notice if you try to research this is that it's way too complex for any person to really understand. What's happened is that through... Through these very complex laws and interconnected companies and CEOs that are not really CEOs and blind trusts and all of these kinds of things that these these financial entities that could be created out of nowhere, we've essentially made a gigantic pile of lies that is what we call an economy. It right? supports itself with other lies mm -hmm. and other uh, financial instruments that... Uh, Keep some kind of game uh, rolling. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, just a classic example is I want everybody who's listening to this show to go out and watch the movie The Big Short. Now, The Big Short was directed by a guy who doesn't really make serious movies most of the time, Adam McKay. 
You might know him and Will Ferrell for all those stupid movies they make together, like Step Brothers and... I don't know. I think they may, he might have directed Old School. Anyways, this is not a director who is known for that kind of stuff. But like most funny people, he's actually pretty smart. So what he decided to do is he wanted to make a movie that explained why in 2008 your world fucking fell apart. And to put it in a nutshell, really what, what the movie is about is about a group of people who figure out that the American economy, uh, economy is propped up on a lie. All right? So effectively, once upon a time... There was a person who had this brilliant idea of saying, you know what, real estate is a really stable kind of economy of its own. Maybe what we can do is we can create these securities that are backed by mortgages that people are definitely going to pay. Because who's not going to pay for their mortgage, right? Like people need to live. And the truth is that most people do pay for their mortgages. So it was kind of a brilliant idea. The problem is that uh, as people started to be like, wow, this is a foolproof, never will go wrong kind of investment, this is the first indication that a bubble will be created, right? Now, there's a, there's a few uh, economists out there that predicted this sort of thing, but they were never really listened to because nobody likes anybody who's a fucking killjoy in any economy, right? You don't like it a killjoy. Do you like the guy who tells you, hey, you know, maybe we should raise the, in, you know, the interest rate? When's the last time anyone has raised an interest rate? In, in any fucking country's bank. When was the last time? It's I can't even remember. A while ago. Yeah. It was a long while ago because nobody fucking dares to hit you in the head with an economic reality because we learned that economic fantasy is more advantageous. We like good news. Oh, we, we don't, love we good don't like news. bad news. Yeah. Now, here's the really tragic thing about economies it turns out that the more stable an economy is, the more people will invest in it and go through a period of what's called euphoria. This is what everybody's investing in. And this is what actually happened with mortgages. Now, people started to sell these really awful mortgages, these ninja mortgages that didn't require anybody to have any assets. No right? income. No income whatsoever. No job, you didn't yeah. even have a f fucking, you didn't even need a job. And you could apply for as many as you wanted because these things were being signed off by financial institutions that just didn't give a shit. The more they, the merrier. The more the merrier because the, what they figured out with really bad math is that they thought, well, if we combine a bunch of bad mortgages with good mortgages, if we, put we a, can balance it all out. We can sprinkle a few bad mortgages in with good mortgages in a blender and no one will taste the difference. <laughs> yeah, nobody will know that I put a bit of dog shit in this really massive blender. And the truth no one is, will know. the truth is, if you eat peanut butter, the same thing happens. There is a certain percentage of rat shit in your fucking peanut butter that you can never get out. And you will accept a fucking certain amount of like a rat shit per peanut, you know, kind of volume. You will accept this, right? Like there's a number that you will accept. I don't know what that number is. One in a hundred thousand fucking particles of rat shit. I don't know what it is. But people thought the same thing could, could happen in the economy. The problem is that over time, the vast majority of all of these aggregated mortgages were all garbage. We're all rat shit crazy bad. But because it was a mortgage, because this was the, this, the part of the economy that everybody's like, it can't fail. It can't possibly fail. These are mortgages. There's no way. Everybody kept on backing down on it. But there was a few dudes who saw through the bullshit because they literally just went to go check it out. They, they went to houses. They interviewed people who were in these ha homes, like homes so large that it, they were unfurnished because nobody could afford any furniture. <laughs> on uh, all that's these a weird sign. Yeah. Like, that's not a great sign, right? Like, you don't have any ability to pay for furniture for these rooms. Maybe you should downsize, but that's not the way that people thought because the thing was, when you were selling a mortgage, you were incentivized to sell the biggest fucking one you could. I mean, people were getting guest houses on, on fucking houses they couldn't afford. And, and this is again, this goes back to that whole euphoria thing that I was telling you about. The more people are sort of like saying like, this is, a, this, this is making money, the more money it makes. And you're almost a fool to not get involved. I mean, do you know who was making money hand over fist during that whole uh, fucking real estate boom? Uh, the guy who made Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla oh, Ice. Oh, yeah. He was making a killing. He was flipping houses and shit. <laughs> Good on Vanilla, yeah. man. That's ice. Yeah, except for it all turned bad. Yeah, it turned bad. It Like it always does. You know, it... it it takes a couple of bad flipped houses for you to basically be fucked and when no one's buying houses because the housing market has crashed because it was all it was all a lie. And and to make matters worse, the almost the entire American economy was dependent on that. Because 
America doesn't build anything anymore. It's all financial fucking magic. That's all it does. It does finance magic. And somehow it thinks that it's providing some kind of vital service to the economy. Yeah, no. You're not providing anything. In fact, you're making everything worse. You're, you're, you're responsible for creating all of these shell company, all of these tax havens. This all comes from the finance industry that wants to find ways to get rid of like this nasty thing called taxes. It's just nasty. I don't want to pay taxes. What can I do? Well, you can create uh, tax havens and then pressure politicians who are in your fucking pocket to pass laws making that okay and so no one will jail you when you get caught i mean that's what happened everybody was acting within the law we yeah, were all and, lawful and just being ignorant on purpose towards what was really happening like anyone with half a brain who was designing these th things what were they called tranches slices of uh, slices yeah different classes of mortgages <clears throat> new what was going on you well, had, they had to no th see that's the tragic thing is that everybody was willfully ignorant and i think that part of that is just human nature like a good example is imagine you were on a boat right and this boat was uh slowly taken in water but at, you know at the same time everybody was collecting these gold coins that was just sort of like on the side of the river making the boat heavier and heavier while it's taken on water now as far as you're concerned, you're just bringing in a couple coins, you know? You're not you're not the one who's going to sink the boat. First of all, you're not fucking trying to pump the water out of it. You you're culpable just with your involvement and your knowledge. Like that's the that's the problem. Most people don't even realize that just by playing that game and knowing about that game, you're breaking the fucking law. This is would be some Rico level shit here, right? You you are knowingly defrauding taxpayers millions of fucking people probably people in other countries as well i mean it's a mess that's on you man that's on fucking you you're breaking that fucking law just by knowing about it and then if you're then if you're participating then if you're br bringing in those gold coins and you're sinking a ship you're just making it sink faster that's the thing that's so annoying i mean everybody's so careless because all they want is a piece of the action i mean I, I, maybe what the problem is, is as soon as you see that that money that that gold coin that fucking piece of paper it messes with your mind i don't know i mean what's the most amount of money that you've ever seen in your life be in person in My person God. i don't know maybe a couple thousand That's something it? like that i don't know you're yeah. such a fucking noob i know like if i showed up with a roll of thousand dollar bills right just stacked together in a fat stack of a hundred thousand dollars a and band I, and it's it were. and it's really nothing when you really think about right. it right and I drop it's, it's this. It's all symbolic. Yeah. And I drop this on the fucking table. And I proposed you to do whatever I decided, like arbitrarily. You would be fucking tempted to do it. And it could be some sick ass shit I'm asking you to do, right? That <laughs> money will mess with you. Damn. And I think that any person who thinks that they're beyond that, like if you've never really seen that much money or you don't have access to that much, I don't think you can really judge what that does. That's the first thing I think we have to come the grips with is that money really does corrupt you i mean it's a fucking sickness almost like this is a disease like did you ever read um the the novel thomas um i forget what his last name is uh something the the utopia was it thomas moore thomas moore what's it about it's basically about this prisoner who oh, well he's not a prisoner but this is guy who visited a, a, a an island called Utopia. This is where we actually get the word utopia from. It was a make believe country that apparently had all of these really novel ideas about how to so, try to solve so, social issues. So one of them was that if you were really greedy and if you stole, you would be given these really heavy shackles made of gold. And like all everything that was shameful was made out of this precious metal. It was a unique idea of trying to say like you know, you should be buried in your own avarice. You should fucking face the consequence of all that. It'd be like saying, like, you like money? Why don't you eat these dirty dollar bills until you're sick? You know what I mean? Like, just to, <laughs> just to fucking get that whole idea that this, this thing you're obsessed about is evil. Like, it's really fucking corrupting you. Like, I think that rich people are caught in a trap. I want to help these people, oh, right, dude. Right, right, right. Like, do, do you think that most of the people who are rich, like, want to probably live their life? I think they're miserable. I, I I think that yeah, the, well, the, the that's people why like, I have to buy all this people shit. People like Bill Gates uh, devoting his you know uh, second half of his life basically to charity. They're the exceptions, really. They are. 
most are hoarders and uh, just like to live on their island. Well, they have their own. I mean, like, you don't, yacht, you don't yeah. think they have their own issues? I think their issues are fear of losing money, uh, you know, trying to maintain high social order, all these fucking pressures that you have. And I think it just fucking makes them weird and corrupt. And, and Oh, absolutely. And the desire to have more is not just kind of like this, oh, well, if I have more money, I'll feel more secure. Like, it, there's the pressure has to come from somewhere else. Like, they're trying to prove something here. They got a chip on that fucking shoulder because. Really, when you think about it, there's a part of them that has to realize that what they're doing is wrong. Like, that, there, there's no way you're 100% convinced that it's like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I mean, it's only because they're so far removed from it. I mean, most financial crime that people are engaged in, and there's a lot of people that are involved in financial crime. Well, the, the whole notion of trading offshore is pretty crazy. Isn't it? Uh, wasn't it a British invention? And they... Uh, you know, a couple of business guys got together and said, hey, if we do business here, we'll pay X percent tax and be under all this oversight. But if we do business not here, well, I guess we're all good. Yeah, it'd be like, why don't we do business in space, in international waters? Yeah, let's, let's, do, uh, let's do business in New Panama on Mars. Why yeah. not? That's going to be the future, dude. The future. I can already see it. Like, yeah, financial hub. We're just going to find some tax haven. No, in the future, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be Mercury. Because mm -hmm. of the fact that Mercury is in a slightly different relativistic time frame, right. you can produce more fraud. All bets are off. <laughs> Make more money faster. <laughs> Make more money faster, bitches. Because of relativity. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... I, what was really shocking is that when we were watching documentaries, one, how few documentaries there were about the Panama Papers thing. It, it's pretty light. I mean, a few people make uh, a couple of news pieces, but it's fluff. I mean, they'll even interview, like, what was that What was that limp dick guy from Panama who was no, trying the, to investigate the crime? The guy who was in charge of uh, keeping uh, the lid on... Uh... Or uh, chasing after all the frauds. Yeah, he's like, we're taking steps to tackle corruption. What steps? <laughs> Nothing. I mean, it's the corruption starts from the fucking bottom of the top. I mean, it, the whole tree is rotten. And what you're saying is we're going to prune a couple of leaves on the edges. And hopefully that'll save the tree. It's not going to fucking happen. But here's the thing that annoys me too. Is that everybody tossed the spotlight on Mossack Fonseca and they're like well, these guys are bad they're the fourth largest yeah there are many other companies so and... if you if you do if you study business you always know that the rule is that the first the largest of all of any business is always twice as large as the fucking second largest that's just how it is that's the, the biggest fucking bull the biggest wolf the biggest fucking horse twice as fucking big as the other guy I mean you just gotta you know you gotta muscle your way through so it's not just like, oh, they're neck and neck. No, 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 no. You're the fourth guy? You're the fucking third loser, all right? You're the guy that people are like, oh, so you don't know where to hide your money, huh? Well, you might as well go to Mazak Fonseca. They're, they're the up-and-comer. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're, we're not even talking about the most serious company, yeah. the biggest, largest one. Because you know why you haven't heard about them? Because they got that shit uh, locked down. <laughs> Their yeah. stuff is tight. and uh... <laughs> <laughs> They don't have some disgruntled fucking leaky, tech guy. Leaky uh, mm -hmm. document troll. Soon to go to jail guy. No, they don't have that. Yeah, so one guy. One guy is going to go to jail. And it's the guy who leaked it. The journalist. Good the, chances the are so that... I mean, will the journalists leak out their source? They probably don't even know that source no, or who it no, is. No. So there's probably not much evidence implicating this guy anyways. I, I don't see them having much. He's protected evidence. by a uh, journalistic shell corporation, actually, so they'll <laughs> never know the original uh, No, but first leak. of all, okay, so you're like, oh, well, the journalists will have some kind of integrity. Well, they are working for large corporations that are involved in the leak themselves, so I, I have my suspicions of the fact that if you're a journalist and you discover that there's some corruption within the company or at least the affiliates of who own your newspaper or, you know, TV channel or whatever, what's your incentive to fucking be truthful or to reveal all that information or even to f focus on that? Because there's so much else you could be talking about. Yeah, there have to be some tricks to the trade, right? If you're working in the business of journalism, not the pure art or science of journalism the uh you know if if you're reporting on something and you don't really want people to dig too deeply you'll just say sources say or yeah uh well that's what we did that's yeah. why we can trick everybody like 
How many people do you think got this right answer? Uh, hardly, uh, uh, well, by, by maybe 25%. Pure random. <laughs> I don't know. All the click bots got click it. wrong, you know. <laughs> no, but um, maybe the, the thing that's hardest to deduce is which stories were nixed before they were even published, right? That's the part you'll never know. You'll never know. But see, and, and here's the thing. If you go to Mos, uh, Mossack Fonseca's website, you'll see this hilarious attempt to assume that they're doing due diligence. And they'll, they'll always say the same thing. What they decided to throw the focus on is the fact that there was, well, it's still quite a bit of indication of money laundering and fraud. But you want to know something? I mean, I'm less concerned with the money laundering because that's a fucking drop in the bucket. All right. There, there's probably half a billion dollars worth of money laundering, maybe a billion dollars worth of it. There's four trillion dollars worth of non-taxed money. Okay. Let's talk about the real fucking crime. Oh yeah, let's tackle corruption. I mean, maybe people should have realized, is it does it make a lot of sense that corporations are doing business with the same entities that are that criminals are? I mean, like, it should be your first clue that your economy is totally fucked when that's just the norm. Be like, hey, so uh who is your uh, who's your bank there, uh, Mr. fucking drug lord? Mossack Fonseca's taking care of my portfolio. Me too! What a coincidence. I'm a billionaire. This is amazing. We have so much in common. There's a couple uh, Chinese brothers. The, yeah, basically uh, the Chinese Coke brothers. The Chinese Quok brothers. Yes. They're, are it's, we're not being racist here. It's not the Quok brothers built, said with a Chinese uh, like you know accent. Quok. They're the Quok brothers. Q-W-O-C. No, it's, it's, they're literally the Chinese Coke brothers. But anyways. One of them has a superior haircut. One of them has basically what looks to be the hair of a child that he robbed and then had sewn on his head. <laughs> had uh, plasticized and wears as a helmet. Freaky. <laughs> basically, he looks like a villain in an anime cartoon. He looks like a villain in one of those kung fu movies that cuts between actual two movies to make it longer. Nobody knows what it is, but one day they will. One day they will. That's that's real That art. was our favorite movie. That is meta back. art. Anyway, <laughs> more on that later. Yeah, more on that much later. But <laughs> let, let's just say the fact that um, nothing's been done and nothing will be done about this. It's nobody a good cares thing they got that the, journalist, though. Holy shit, was no, he guilty. No, nobody cares about tax evasion. They don't, all right? Infrastructures are crumbling, but nobody fucking cares. They won't do anything about it because they're fine with electing leaders who are involved in this mess anyways. I mean, like, you cannot purge the people involved. I mean, if you did, who would be left and even if you, okay, let's say we did get rid of all those crooked ass fucking politicians and business people that are involved in this. I mean, there's almost nobody left by the end of it. If we took over, let's say the, the, the innocents who have never heard of that, how long before we set up our own fucking shell corporations mm. and do the same shit? Yeah, we're going to seize all the assets, then we'll have all this money, dirty money, and where do we put it? We need a new shell corporation, uh-oh. It's not like you can disinvent all of the wealth that's suddenly being created that you got to take over now, too. Like, the issue that we have is that wealth is driving people mad. That's the bigger problem. Like, it's almost like the, 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 the zombie virus. You know, that's what wealth is. It's a bit of a fucking zombie virus. It messes with your head. It makes you do things that are immoral, just... Just on, on the basis that you want to keep it. You want to keep this magical, wonderful feeling mass wealth that you've accumulated at any cost. Like, you realize yeah. this is a problem. Like, imagine it's anything else. And you would be like, dude, you need an intervention, right? You're like, you'd have an intervention. The collective delusion is just too valuable to give up. Well, we, we know that if we were to suddenly question these edifices and they crumble around us, what are we left with? The problem we have is, in general is that no one has a clever or great idea about where to go next. We're just like, what's the best idea? Pokemon Go. That's basically the best idea anyone has. Create a virtualized world so you don't need to really think about this one and go collect all of these virtualized animals that you're going to fight for your amusement. And so you don't need to think about your shit job. You don't need to worry about the fact that you're on call 24 fucking 7. Like, I, my, my friends are all getting emails at like 10 o'clock at night on fucking weekends. There's this uh, hidden level in Pokemon Go. It's like an offshore gym where you can really train up your... <laughs> anyway, forget about it. <laughs> Don't worry it's a real about scam. it. Don't worry about real it. scam. Yeah. The real scam is actually all those people that are making a killing off playing Pokemon Go for other people. This is what I love. We, we, They're the we will... same clowns who will stand in line for the new yep. iPhone 
uh, no, do you, no, but no, get it's, tickets no, it's for worse. Star Wars. It's worse because here's the thing: what you're doing is that you are commoditizing your own fun. You know, you're, my, you're fucking farming out your fun to someone else because you can't get it all in. What yeah, is wrong with you? How much is your time worth? Like, why are you farming out your own fun? Like, maybe you can't catch them all, but maybe it should just be you that's doing it, huh? How about that? Like, you want to catch them all because somebody else did it and had your fun? You're weird, man. You got a problem. Dude, I pay this guy to go to the gym for me. Yeah, that's <laughs> he, basically what that so is. He's so jacked. He is so jacked. <laughs> and I pay him to fuck my wife, man. She is so satisfied. <laughs> like, what's happening? What is happening? I don't understand the society anymore, man. I want to retire from it. That's what I want to do. Yep. I'm going to move offshore and have great, great life. Well, first of all, I'm going to set up an offshore tax haven. So I'm going to have like, go to Panama. Do you know what you see? You see favelas surrounding these massive monoliths pointing to the sky so high that you just like, so that they don't see the rabble on the ground. If it could be a cloud city, I bet you it would be. Just a matter of time, all right? Just a matter of fucking time before there's a city in the sky that's the tax haven of the world. Really. Because it's not like really anywhere, is it? If it's in Panama the sky. has two currencies, the United States dollar and the Panamanian Balboa. I'm, I bet you that's for the rabble. Yeah. You know what you use that for? Buying cabbage. You fucking use that shit. Haggling over cabbage, cabbage in an alley. Do you think alley. you fucking buy cabbage with an American dollar at the store? I doubt it. Please, what do you want to buy the whole fucking uh, table or uh... you buy a cabbage shipping company with American dollars, but uh, you know you use that Panamanian garbage for everything else. <laughs> What's by the way? Are there, is there any parity between the currency? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, certainly yeah. not. Uh, let's see. Is it thirty-seven to one? <laughs> it's like, what? What is Panamanian industry? Like <laughs> one Panamanian. Okay, one U.S. dollar gives us how many Panamanian Balboas? I'm, they're called Balboas like <laughs> Rocky? Like Rocky. All right. Oh, there is parody. Okay, one Panamanian Balboa is one U.S. dollar. Oh, fantastic. Hmm. You know what, though? That's just like... That's, that's a point. That's what, that's what you need. Well, what's the point? I don't know. As soon as the American economy collapses, at least you can have, like, you know, different colored money or something. <laughs> Uh, I, you know what? When you live in a country where there's parity with the American dollar and you're fucking living in a favela, man, that's got to be tough. It's got to be fucking tough. Yeah. You know, hopefully all those rich people are constantly just throwing money, you know, like at people because I, I don't know how else you can make money. Like driving rich people around, maybe wiping their asses for them. I mean, like what's the, what's the, what side industries are there? <laughs> From this tax haven bullshit. I mean, like, the British Virgin Island has 500,000 companies. I mean, that's 17 companies for every citizen that lives there. That's a lot of companies. That's a lot of companies. They're, they also have, like, 2,000 boats, which is, like, one in every 10 people. Well, it's certainly not, uh, you know, any of the poor citizens. It's probably the rich citizens having multiple boats. But that's such a ridiculous amount of boats. <laughs> Be like, what's your, what is your industry? Uh, we hide money. We hide assets. In boats. <laughs> In anything we can fucking find. Yeah. What a service to the world. Thank you. You know, all that money that could be going to, like, you know, uh, paying teachers. On paper, we, we flip back and forth between Balboas and U.S. dollars 88,000 times a second. <laughs> Cleans it up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, for a fraction of a second every day, there's 500,000 companies that are trading in Balboa dollars. <laughs> just for a fraction of a second, though. Yeah. Just to clean it up. Yeah. Techni clean. Technically on Mars. <laughs> it's all on the up and you up. You know, what if you digitally sent your money to Mars and then sent it back? Is that clean? You know, is your money clean technically? Because it's left the, you know, the, the Van Allen uh, radiation belt. It's certainly confusing. <laughs> and that should keep the authorities at bay for a while. <laughs> It's not clear. Not what, clear. You, does the moon still fall into the jurisdiction of the earth because it's still within its gravitational pull? How does it work exactly? <laughs> as a tax haven. Can we, can we talk about the future of the moon as a tax haven? Because yeah, I don't have a lot of... Uh, only the dark side of the moon. You don't want to trade <laughs> on the earth-facing side. It's not worth it. Right. The not dark side it. is the one that doesn't face the earth. Remember, it gets sunlight. 
It's just doesn't phase the earth. That's why we exactly. call it Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's dark. Because if we're not looking at it, it don't exist. It's dark. As in the money's real dark. Real yeah. dark. And you have those kinds of places on earth. British Virgin Island is a dark side of the moon, bitch. What's legal there? Psh, what's illegal What there? isn't? <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. You are a slave to the fact that no one around you cares. That the fact that your entire economy is propped up on lies. You don't care because... You know what? You get just enough to make you happy. You get your little beer. You got your little fucking show that you watch. Pocket full of Balboas. You got a pocket full of Balboas, bitch. You're ready to go a night on the town. And then every weekend, you go get drunk at a club and you forget all about your problems. That The fact that the world financial you know, systems are all built up on lies. I mean, I could talk to you about the LIBOR scandal, but we won't this time. That's a completely different thing. That's about how fucking, uh, you know, just the interest rates of things are decided arbitrarily by people who get to exploit it before uh, anybody else does. So, yeah, that's a whole other thing about people making money on interest rates that they invent. Uh huh. And then maybe we could also talk about the fact that we live in economies that resemble casinos. Huh? Remember that movie I was telling you, The Big Short? What is a short? Well, it's betting against a company. I'm sorry, did you say betting? Yes, I did. It's absolutely betting, okay? And sometimes you can bet against an entire country, even your own. And, and here's the fucked up thing. When you bet against something, you can bet whatever you want, however much you want. You can leverage a hundred times how much you want to bet. You have a you have hundred thousand dollars? That's cool. You want to bet like ten million dollars? You can do that. With even less. I just have a couple of Balboas. What does that get me? <laughs> oh, man. Just, I, I don't need much of a deposit because if it turns out that the odds are really against your favor, anyone will pick that odd up. It's That's, again, like betting. Like, let's pretend you were um, you were watching a dog race, right? And there's this fucking anemic old dog that's missing a leg, and he's 10,000 to one, right? And a guy comes over to you, and he's like, I want to buy a million fucking tickets and bet on that one dog. Would you refuse him? Hmm? Do you hate money? Of course you would take that bet. But here's the thing. The guy places the bet and then he shoots every other fucking dog. Yeah, That's the world economy you live in. Where people can do that. That's they cold. <laughs> you have to live with that reality, man. So, um, good luck with that. I hope that you sleep well at night. Our shows are full of fucking fun. Welcome to Sketchy News, bitch. <laughs>